Oh yeah, look, look, we'll get to the topics that we get to here. I just I'm putting them down in case I have to throw or I come up with the best transition. Could happen. It's not impossible. You never know. Alrighty, taking it away, episode 338 of We Were Gamers. Hello, uh, I'm JJ today, and I'm hosting. <laughs> who are you? Um, who are you other days? Who are you most <laughs> yeah. You know what, look at, you know what, uh, let's not examine the, the opening statement too closely here. Let's just, uh, moving right along. Uh, with me uh, are my good friends, uh, Andy and Michael out there. Yay. Hey, everybody. Uh, we're just going to do kind of a hop around, talk about some stuff, get some updates on where we're at in life, where we're at in uh, in gaming a little bit this week. Grab grab bag, not mailbag. Yeah, no no mailbag uh, this week. Or we don't have any planned, and I haven't checked the mailbag, so we're we're not doing that. A <laughs> uh, uh, bit a bunch of of news out there. Uh, thought we would get some of our thoughts on the news. And uh, you know, then check in with where we are personally playing games and what we're up to since the holidays are quickly approaching. I don't know if you guys noticed, Ooh, buddy. It's uh, growing mess short out here. I'll uh, I'll sum up my experience so far. With uh, uh, today, I had to go to the post office. Nope. Oh, <laughs> yeah. Fortunately, I didn't have to get in the normal line. I was just using the kiosk. But those uh, those were some people uh, yeah. in for a wait. Yeah. Oh, never mail a package this time of year if you don't, if you literally don't absolutely have to, have to, right? Yeah. Yeah. Well, unfortunately, Michael and I both, I think, have come to a life changing conclusion. Oh, okay. So, see, this is what we're here for. We were gamers' life changing conclusion minute. Uh, we both need to get rid of stuff, and a lot of our stuff is worth stuff on eBay. Okay. That seems reasonable to me. Unfortunately, yep. that means sending stuff this time of, time of year. <laughs> this, is, this is the best time of year to be listing things because everybody's looking for gifts. Mm. However, our I post think office we, isn't horrendous. Yeah, and you and I each have our, our own sort of workarounds for not dealing with the worst of it. I use the kiosk and you print out labels at home. I oh, yeah, not having... Yeah. Yeah, pre-printing the labels is is key. You don't want to have to have them do it. That's just no. Yeah. And the kiosk is even easier, right? Like especially if the pack you have boxes or whatever envelopes. I don't know. I, I don't know what kind of kiosk you guys have. I've seen some of them different ways where some of them is just like a letter slot for like heavier letter padded letter kind of things. Other ones where it's just like yo, you can straight up put boxes in here. Yeah. We have all that around here. Yep. Should know. Orange County always gets the nice stuff. <laughs> I'm shaking my fist at you virtually. Well, uh, in the spirit of the season, there uh, was a big show, which I'm sure none of us watched because that's how uh, we roll on this show. Uh, but the Game Awards happened uh, some number of days ago as of the coming out of this podcast. And yeah, I don't know, do you... uh, through oh, almost a week, probably. At least a week, yeah. Uh, yeah by the time it's airs, almost a week. Yeah, like six days. Yeah, so a week. Okay. Uh, I assume neither of you really got to watch any of it. <sighs> nope. <laughs> Who has the time? Yeah. It's, also, it, like, it like, does anyone four, watch? It was at four thirty, right? Uh, Pacific. It, the like, I think the pre-show started then, and the actual like televised quote-unquote portion started later. Oh. Uh, I had a I had a computer screen on it because I was trying to win a Steam Deck. Uh, I, I did not win a Steam Deck. You could buy a Steam Deck. They ship them quickly. Yeah, but I also want one for free. Yeah, how'd that work out for you? I didn't get one. So no. I'm in the same place, really, and nothing of value was lost. Because I also didn't watch the screen that it was on. Let's be clear. Well, I was just got. there, <laughs> and I left. <laughs> I forgot to turn my Steam box on in order to... Uh, try and acquire one for one of you, and I forgot. It's 
I think there were like eight hundred thousand people watching on Steam. So Shocker, odds were probably they low. Tell you <laughs> they're gonna give away Steam decks to whoever watches. One per minute, though, and the thing was like over three hours. So that's like a decent amount of of Steam decks, you know. But like when there are eight hundred thousand people watching, like what's the chance, right? Pretty low. It's amazing that they did the math on that and the advertisement dollars and the loss on hardware is enough to still motivate them to say, eh, but people will buy stuff on steam if they have a steam deck. Bro, there's no way it wasn't a win. I, I don't know how much it costs to do marketing because we do know marketing, but it has to be less than the cost of what? Like 180 steam decks. 180 steam decks yeah it has to be right yeah buying sure. ads on facebook is probably more expensive than that that's uh, so if you mark each steam deck at 400 dollars, that's seventy two thousand dollars. Yeah, but if you're a valve how much money are you spending to promote your steam decks right like way more than that it's got to be yeah probably i don't know I don't how know. much i don't know what i don't know what marketing budgets are so the, there's you know this is one of the the new world where you create something interesting and it kind of gets marketed for you that part where it gets marketed for you involves you giving free copies to influencers which counts for money right yeah yeah mm -hmm. so all right well let's do the other marketing which is the, <laughs> the video game stuff at the game awards hey i um, uh, while we were talking about the steam deck i got a follow-up for last episode oh yeah okay real, real quick yeah yeah uh that was real fun that's my follow up <laughs> oh okay i was gonna say did you get farther uh i met i monkeyed around with it i showed uh the kids running old games my wife looked at it and was like no way is that really tetris on there and i'm like yeah they have new tetris on the switch though <laughs> yeah, please um, don't play this tetris again the game yeah, boy one yeah, <laughs> yeah. Cool. uh you know it was cool it was enough to get me into thinking that I can do this, you know, with the emulation thing. So a uh, little teaser for other conversations, but back to the game awards. So it was fun. Uh, that's really, all I'm saying. really quick follow up. Uh, I did also uh, hear from some other people oh. uh, that uh, EMU deck is like really good. Uh, so do I need to go back in and uninstall everything to start up EMU deck? I don't know how EMU deck works. Okay. Uh, but <laughs> the stuff I saw from people was like, it is way more like please do all this work for me uh -huh. and then has like a, a much slicker front end and stuff than where retroarch gives you all the options emu deck is just like Yo, you want to play these games here you go hmm that's the, the thing i did notice about emu deck is that it has some sort of script running that puts your games onto the steam front page yeah it will it, it integrates in a way that like makes them makes all your games seem like steam games so you can just go into your steam list and launch them what i really don't understand is how they did this for no money bro scripts are cool <laughs> <laughs> uh, i yeah, don't know well is i may uh i may uh, i to also follow up on last episode we also looked into how to capture better video from the Steam Deck. So maybe we'll redo that and I'll have captured stuff from the Steam Deck directly. Or not. We'll see. I'm sure we'll have reason to capture from your Steam Deck in the future, though. So uh, it might be worth. I don't know if it's worth their $90 dock, but it seems like you can get by with other HDMI. USB-C adapters. Oh, OK. That is interesting to know. All right. Moving on. Uh, let's talk about <laughs> video games. I know that's weird for this podcast. Um, I think we'll just start in the place that I think all of us can agree. Uh, they announced, hey, did you guys like that Star Wars Jedi uh, Outcast game? Wait, Jedi Outcast? No. That's not it. Nice, nice try. Cal <laughs> does not. Uh... Isn't that wait, this is Jedi Jedi Knight 2? Jedi Outcast? No, is that uh, Jedi also... 3? Also the wrong <laughs> white guy. The sequel to Kodor? No, that's Sith Lords. No. Uh, anyway, uh, the the other one was Jedi uh, Fa Jedi Fallen Order, right? Jedi Fallen Order. That's that the real the game. And they have announced a officially announced and put out a trailer for the sequel Jedi Survivor. Correct. I assume. I assume we don't need to say that Andy is in for this. I'm 
I uh, I I have to research where to pre-order it. That's how into it I am. Okay, okay. so yes. gonna break gonna break our our cardinal rule. There is a cardinal rule on this podcast that you should never pre-order anything. Basically, yeah, there's virtually no reason. There are two reasons I can think of as if it's some sort of limited actual thing that you can put in your hands and you need to buy it before they make it, like those analog systems. If you're really into those, you need to buy them when they tell you you can buy them. Um, but I was thinking about this recently, and one of the reasons that those those games get made is because they sell like gangbusters quick, not late, Right. Um, yeah, and big AAA games like this care a lot about the day one sales. And if I can pay the difference of something like $30, which is what I paid last time, I think I paid $30 with an Epic coupon or something like that to buy it on the Epic store, which ended up being a headache because you have to launch the Epic store to launch the origin launcher. But yeah, yeah. Um, if the difference to me is $30 to tell them, please don't stop making single player games like this Mm -hmm. might be worth it. I, I don't know if you watched the trailer, Andy. No, I felt like there was at least two parts in the trailer that were like, they really want you and like Ken to really like this game. (laughs) (laughs) Uh, shout outs to Ken, friend of the pod. Um, well, we just talked about Cal Katarn, so his ears perked up and he tuned in. Yeah, so uh, yeah, it, it, definitely some call outs uh, in this. And, you know, it looks like they they showed him using a gun. Uh, it's true. Yeah, it's been rumored this is, and this confirmed. Is the, this is the, the Cal Katarn turn you wanted, right? <laughs> Ain't, well, ancient weapons and hokey religions. Well, I mean, even Obi Wan gave up gave up on that idea. Um, if you watched that show, spoilers, I guess. Uh, you know, it makes some sense. You, you know, I don't know. Blasters work sometimes. Yeah, man. Look, I'm in for it. I think that game had like really cool systems and was a fun, like little Souls ish, a dip your toe in the Souls pond. It's as much in the dip that I want to be in. It, 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 the same better be true of the sequel, right? Like, keep the balance the way that it was for the us I mean, lighter there are no, fans. There are, no, there are no blasters in Souls. So you probably... <laughs> hey, <laughs> bow and arrow, maybe, but not really this. Although, you know, magic... Uh, as like long as I can world. grab a stormtrooper and use him as a human meat shield continuously, uh, like before... Pretty and, sure they showed that in the sure trailer. That. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, so you're good. Uh, we're good. I definitely saw them throwing multiple stormtroopers off cliffs, which is like, oh, I remember doing this in that game. <laughs> <laughs> they know they know what the people came for. Yeah, they, yeah. <laughs> they had they had the, they had the player in their mind when they were making it. They knew what was up. Uh, so that that looks super cool. I'm pretty excited about that one. Uh, another one that I think speaks to probably everyone on this podcast. Earthblade. What's that? Yeah. So this one, this one got teased. I'm trying to remember how long ago this one got teased. If it was over the summer, maybe. Could be. Um, but it was uh, Maddie Makes Games, the, oh, uh, the creator of Celeste. Yeah. yeah so they is... originally had just leaked the, the Maddie, cover art. Maddie Thorson, I think, I... is the the woman that does that. Does one Maddie of the people, games. I believe. Yeah. Well, I mean, obviously, yeah, I don't think Celeste is a single cre- person project, but. The creator of Earthblade is listed as extremely okay games, which who knows? There are lots of people involved with these sorts of things. So, um, but yeah, this is billed as the next game from the creators of Celeste. Yep, different, uh, uh, different vibe. Yeah, you you know what it looks like? Hollow Knight. Mm. Yes, hmm. it does, but a brighter color palette. Yeah, much brighter, definitely. But like I. You, Definitely platforming. You saw a lot of that, like the character jumping around, doing stuff, but like attacking and like monsters in the area that you could hit with like a sword or something. Perhaps right. an earth blade. I don't know. More, more Metroidvania like <laughs> than, than a pure platformer like Celeste was. 
Yeah. Mm -hmm. And, and, you know, they they showed some like portals kind of stuff. Unclear what that's about. A little little hint of story tease. Um, But yo, man, that art still looks so good. Oh, I I think I am very excited for this. As am I. I I would like to play Hollow Knight before I play it. So, but uh, anything made. Oh, my God. Look, anything. Oh, my gosh. Great. Great Steam Deck game. Hollow Knight. (laughs) I think I actually have it on my switch. (laughs) Okay, I do great Switch game probably too. I mean that game is yeah. perfect for both those consoles. I, the Steam Deck was not it was not a twinkle in the eye, you know, a couple of years ago. It was a real surprise. I don't know. Yeah, that is true. Like, I guess what? Hollow Knight's been out for several years at this point. Before the Steam Deck, yeah. So uh, where's, way before where's the Steam the Deck. Sequel? Hollow Knight. Hollow Knight's like twenty seventeen. Where's Silk Song <laughs> Keely? Why didn't you announce it? Come on, man. Twenty seventeen, I think. So it'll be when like when I came out. Yeah. 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 That's quite a few already, years. Yeah. Six years to make a sequel. Wow. Where's Silk Song? <laughs> yeah. That's what I want to know. Come on. They're prepping it to run on. Uh, on PS6. DOS. I don't know. PS6. Yeah. <laughs> PS6. It feels like that, honestly. Uh, uh, along these lines of. Uh, pixely and uh games that were well regarded they announced they're making hades 2 did you guys end up playing hades no sorry i still have not dipped my toes into that one i oh, wouldn't man. very much like to i, I own it it's, it's so good sitting right here waiting for me to hit play yeah that game is so good i think it's still on uh xbox oh my uh, it may off. Be, no it's not on anymore it may be on um would that be a good Steam Deck game? Yeah, probably. Uh, yeah, yeah. I, I'm sure it looks good. I don't know what the um, it's, so the, the controls question, are made for controllers, so it's it will be fine. The real question is, I'm not quite convinced in that thing's quick reaction abilities as a controller. But if it runs well on there and it doesn't need you to do absolutely finite, uh, f- finite? No, fine. You mean very fine. Very fine motor control. Fine kind of motor, stuff. yeah. Fine reaction controls or quick reaction controls. I think it would be fine. But the game was designed I, for controllers and consoles, so I, I think yeah. it would probably be okay. But okay. I, who knows? Uh, anyway, th- this is one of those games that they announced it's doing the same thing that Hades One did, which is it's coming to early access. Uh, this time on Steam and Epic Games together, rather than just Epic Games. Uh, good and <laughs> wise so, yes wise uh, yeah. similarly yeah. to some of these other ones which are coming out on both epic and steam at the did same you time. guys see the gabe newell shade about uh exclusive contracts <laughs> I, in this past week? I missed this this is very oh. funny oh man should i tell it yes so uh michael you've I'm, since we're talking about news you've heard that the microsoft activision merger is kind of like uh on the rocks, maybe, but depending on yeah, the FTC's under, lawsuit here. Yeah, under yeah, that, investigation. Well, the FTC sued, so... They sued, so their investigation's over, and they're, they want a court to decide uh, they taking the position that they should not merge. Right. So uh, they would have to prove in court a bunch of things in order for them to still merge. Uh, Bobby Kotick thinks it's going to happen still, but... Um, I mean, it may still happen. Who knows? I... I, I Bobby Kotick's not my first go-to on uh, trustworthy information. Well, yeah, but look, that's <laughs> <laughs> anyway. The... Uh, there went there went As my application at Blizzard straight into the thrash. <laughs> you don't want to work there; it's fine. Oh, uh, you know, I'm sure that's still a decent company. Um, somewhere, somewhere there, they're trying. In- Anyway, as part I'm of dr- this, I'm Microsoft down a rabbit did. hole. Okay, yes. So, um, as part of the run up to this FTC problem, Microsoft's been trying to get ahead of it. And I don't know if you heard the announcement, but they they've been promising PlayStation that Call of Duty will remain on PlayStation, and they just signed a 10 year deal with Nintendo to put Call of Duty onto whatever Nintendo platform. Nintendo says. Um, oh, okay. Yeah, which is kind of strange. Nintendo doesn't really have the so Cache it sounds to, like Microsoft uh, has been offering 10-year yeah. windows to anyone. Yeah. If you can get Call of Duty guaranteed for 10 years. 
Yeah, because they want to prove that they're not trying to box people out of distribution in the industry. Right. Um, okay. So they apparently offered this deal to uh, Valve, and Valve turned it down. Uh, their response was not that they turned it down because the deal wasn't good enough, but Gabe Newell himself wrote a, a three-part thing i can't remember the middle one the first one was like we've always had call of duty oh yeah i remember the second one so the first one was we've always had call of duty as long as they've been putting it on pc and we've been around the second one was um (laughs) the second one was that um was it balmer balmer's uh balmer's always been good to his word anything he tells us he's gonna do he does and the third one was we don't believe in exclusive yeah, mean, contracts. I think you meant Phil Spencer there. Phil, not Phil Ballmer, Spencer, right? not Steve Ballmer. Sorry. Oh, okay. Phil, yeah, yeah. Phil Spencer's always been good to his word. And the third one was we don't believe in exclusive contracts. Oh, uh, the I mean, there's a known libertarian streak of the people at Valve, but the better one at the end, like he's like, we don't believe in exclusive contracts because. <laughs> Steam is like the number one market for PC games. You have to come to us anyway, and you would be fools <laughs> to not join our service. It's like the implication there, you know. He uh, just right. Also, like, shade on Epic of like, yeah, you oh see what yeah, yeah, doing yeah, over there, the exclusive contract stuff for, about yeah from Epic. Yeah, yeah, it's a nice gimmick, but you're still not on our level. <laughs> exactly. Oh, well, and like you know, like he said in the first part, it's like these games have always released on Steam because we make all the money. Yeah. And then, <laughs> They're like, are you going to yeah. not put out Call of Duty on the biggest PC game distribution platform? Mm, I didn't think so. Yeah, good luck yeah. with that. Uh huh. Yeah. Ask, Very- ask, uh, what was it? EA, how that went. And Ubisoft, both of whom and- took all their games off and now come crawling back. Mm hmm. Yeah, too bad they didn't try to, you know, get better terms instead of saying, uh, well, we'll just do it ourselves. I mean, we'll just do it ourselves. Oh, how hard shoot. Could it be? Yeah, uh, Ubisoft, who hasn't released games on Steam in a while. Uh, hey, that that latest Assassin's Creed just came out on Steam. Weird. Yeah. Did you hear about that? Oh, my God. <laughs> there's, there's an uproar about that, too, because apparently they didn't implement Steam achievements. They did not. It only yeah. has, like, Ubisoft achievements. Oops. <laughs> people were like, what is this? And then they were, like, going around banning people on the Steam forums asking for them. Yep. That was amazing. Oh, man. What a week for news. Dude, what a week. Uh, a bunch more games got announced. Uh, stuff that I know that all of us have uh, at least looked at and played a little bit. They're doing a Return to Castlevania DLC for Dead Cells, Michael. I just saw this. Yes, it like the the trailer for it has like Alucard and a Belmont and Sypha <laughs> in it, and then also Dracula and then the Dead Cells guy. <laughs> uh, a- Update on Hollow Knight. I have it on Switch and on Steam. There you go. You should really play that game, Andrew. It's pretty good. Uh, I just I don't know what that is, but that sounds hilarious, and I kind of want to try that. I just I love how much the uh, the Dead Cells team is all in on just like generating new fun content for the game. So the interesting thing, you know, the original group of people that made that game uh, have sort of stopped working on it and gone on to do other things, but they, sp- they they left the company they founded to the people who wanted to keep working on Dead Cells. So it's like the same company. It's just different people now. Okay. And they're just like, We're, we like Dead Cells. We're just going to keep doing this. And so then they did, they've kept doing this. And those other people went off and did whatever else they wanted to do. It's That's like, cool. it's a smart way to do that i think people still love it so yeah we're doing something right uh oh there are i a bunch uh, of... i figured out the extremely okay games thing because i really wanted to uh okay thorson shut down matt makes games to recognize that there was a team that was making things like celeste and earth earthblade so that's when they they shut down the other one and renamed it extremely okay games ah Okay, that's great clarification. Thank you. Mm-hmm. I'm happy to learn this because I knew you were right that the other one was like Maddie makes games or something. So yeah, yeah. Um, Sony announced a bunch of their games coming to PC. 
uh, yo, you want to play that Last of Us, uh, which is now called Last of Us Part One? You can do that on PC. Mm-hmm. Uh, yeah, more Last of Re- Us. It's the same Last of Us though. It's not. It's not more. This is the no, but it's more of the same of the more. Yes, that's it's true. Just... <laughs> uh, They've re-released well, that, that game gonna 15 be the times. Next... That's going to be the next Doom, right? It's just going to run on calculators in 2093. <laughs> I mean, it feels like they're heading that direction. Uh, they also announced Returnal is coming to PC this year. Uh, that's like My a... Fingers doing the uh, the Cyclone, the Who Cares Cyclone. Yeah, that game was liked, uh, but I think it's kind of like a, yeah, okay, might as well. Uh, in in JJ targeted news, uh, that looks like Baldur's <laughs> Gate three is releasing next August, which is like, uh, yes, please. Uh, that's for all of us, I think, because um, friend of the pod Matt's already on that one in the early access. That's the one that I will not. That's one of those things I won't early access or whatever because the game's going to be so much larger and more expansive. But it sounds fun. Yeah, I uh, they showed Andrew. They showed Minsk in the trailer. Yep. Uh, also, by the saying. way, like every single one of their new games that they announced, or all everything we're talking about, has basically said it's coming out next year. Uh, the, the Earthblade is twenty twenty four. All the other ones are twenty twenty three, though. Yes. Uh, Diablo four. They showed an, a new trailer for and announced June sixth, twenty twenty three. Wow. Maybe they'll have a build at the whatever thing they're doing called some kind of BlizzCon thing. Are they going to even do that? Yeah, just they said so. Man? They did. Ibarra said that they're doing it. Okay, I don't. I don't know. I mean, I wouldn't hold super hard my breath. You know that feels a, that feels sooner than I expected from that. Game. Keep a snorkel <laughs> nearby. Yeah. Uh, there is a. Uh, sorry, a new expansion for Cyberpunk 2077 coming out, apparently. Didn't know that they were still doing that. Yeah, you didn't give up on that game. And then the, the big one, Armored Core 6. <laughs> <laughs> Being made by FromSoft. Uh, by FromSoft, that's the big news. Wait, they're the original makers of Armored Core. I know, but that the fact that they went back to it instead of just letting... Whoever make it yeah. while they yeah, make Elden Ring 2. Armored Core 6, Fire of the Rubicon. <laughs> I didn't know it had a subtitle. That's awesome. Oh, yeah, dude. Wow. Dude, all the all of the Armored Core games have crazy subtitles. Go back and look. There's like a bunch of weird ones. So will uh, they yeah. revamp Armored Core to be a Souls-like? So uh, all of the interviews that have come out about this, I know because I've been trying to figure out what this game is. Uh say that first it's it's still mission based so this isn't like elden ring mecha game um and like they are specifically downplaying that it's not like related to souls Uh, it shouldn't be but you know that's made their money for the last 10 years uh, I mean, I think they made more money than God off of elden ring (laughs) so they're probably (laughs) like we could try this why not they're doing just fine um who knows so I, I feel that there's just like enough stuff there that was worth us getting our reactions to, seeing how we're, seeing how we're feeling about all that. Yeah, I mean, oh hey, it, speaking of uh, of new stuff, I don't know if you guys saw that uh, Portal with RTX also dropped at the end of last week, and it is oh, free on Steam. Okay, do you have to download a different game, or is it part of Portal? So it is. It looks like it's a separate installation. So if you go to the portal with RTX page, you can add it to your library for free, and it's its own install. And uh, I'm pretty sure this this size is way bigger than the the original portal. Well, that makes sense, be. but it's yeah. weird that it's not just like a download, an overlay, yeah, or like a, I think yeah, it's, like a. Now game. it might it might replace it when I hit install, but I haven't done that no, yet. No, I, I don't think it does. I, I think nvidia did some work on this and so i think it's free if you own portal oh that looks it's, good but i think it yeah, yeah i want i didn't know this came out i want to play this badly i will probably play this wow yep so go out download it looks it looks yeah, real go, metal looks go like metal instead of plastic 
and the like the, the stuff i saw of like the lights going through a portal was look insane the, look at the the activation switches they're like see-through now holy cow yeah, yeah i'm i was super excited for this uh because portal is like portal is one of those games that like even if you go back and play now it came out what like 2012 or something yeah like a long time ago 10 years almost more maybe portal one it, probably longer. 2007 2007 yeah yeah just uh, portal one it's portal two is like portal two is like 2000 portal two is like 2012 okay uh maybe I, earlier even. i, I portal one still plays great yeah. and is like a great game and it doesn't look amazing, but it doesn't matter because of all the like art design in it still makes the game have like a good, clean look. Mm -hmm. And I think this RTX stuff makes it look unbelievable. It's like too real, like weirdly real. So I I'm excited to try this. I really want to check that out. Nice. I, I think we're missing an um, important piece of news that was not announced. Oh, yeah, I think I think there is more news here, Andy uh vampire survivors dlc oh yeah dude yeah <laughs> I, I will give them two dollars or whatever they want to charge I think they for want two dollars i think you hit it bro exactly i got on two those. i got two dollars i'll pay that i got your two dollars right here buddy it is also ready to go. also apparently the entire game of vampire survivors is out now on mobile for free it's the whole game there's no ads <laughs> it's just what? the game you can just play it on your phone right now. Just go download it. Maybe he's hoping to just make his money back on the DLC. Maybe. Uh, I played it on my phone. Yo, it's Vampire Survivors. Yeah. Um, but also, it's kind of hard to play with the touch controls. Uh, I mean, you know, you I was having a tough time. Did you play Vampire Survivors with a controller? Oh, yeah. I always have. I used my keyboard and the arrow keys on there. Mm -hmm. uh, I found that to be very responsive and easy. I was having a little bit of trouble with the D-pad or the... I kept trying different controls on the Steam yeah, I Deck. Use, I, use, I use analog stick. Uh, oh, you do? Oh, you. Mm -hmm. The dead zone on the Steam Deck seems large. I'm pretty sure you can go edit your dead zone. I might have to because it, it takes a minute for the character to like react. Yeah, that's that's no bueno. You need to be able to turn. Yeah, uh, I found I found the mobile controls. I have a I have an Android phone. I've I've played Vampire Survivors on it. Um, found the controls kind of weird. I can def it definitely will. You have to get used to it. You're doing a lot of like dragging one way or the other way to get the person to turn around and stop. And if you take your finger off, you know all, all the kind of stuff. Um, but it's only doing dragging with your finger stuff because again, you don't have to press buttons to attack or anything. It just does it right. Yeah, it's amazing what they were able to accomplish now that they did that code switch. Yeah, uh, the the real problem in that game, though, is that like in the early levels, your character is really weak and yeah. you need to be a little precise in order to like get to like level five or six or whatever and get a couple weapons. So you don't just like get run over. Yeah. Uh, at which point then you would become powerful enough that you can just sort of steamroll stuff. Uh, but yeah, in a new game, it's a little tough, but, you know, totally doable, playable for sure. And yeah, maybe two dollar DLC on your phone, too. Hey, why not? uh right. highly recommended from this podcast multiple oh, times yeah. uh and if you you know are they still doing steam awards uh maybe i don't know if that's over i don't know if it's over either uh, i nominated vampire survivors for stuff for sure yeah yeah i'm sure it will win it's like really popular i believe last month it was the most played steam deck game shocker in all of steam yeah there you go. Uh, any any other news uh, we want to cover here? I got one. Yeah. Have we made fun of Nintendo on here for the way they treat Smash before? What? Uh, us? Us? Talk <laughs> bad about Smash? Who? What? Huh? No, we don't talk bad about Smash. I defend Smash. I I talk bad about it. Oh. Well, so a lot of people like that Smash game, you guys. Yeah, I don't I, know I do if know you that. pay a super lot of attention to the competitive community around smash. Uh, but most of the time, all you hear from those communities uh, is the amount of trouble they have trying to get smash into other competitive tournaments like Evo and other things like that. Right. Or, or like the, they need seven more CRTs or like the yeah. person broke five controllers or something. That's the well, only things I ever hear. 
uh, it, mostly I hear about the the str struggles they have getting Smash in front of larger fighting game crowds because they don't Nintendo really doesn't want the thing there. So a couple of years ago, I guess Nintendo was like, you know what, we're getting out of the business of managing the ideas behind the, the tournaments and Smash and all that sort of stuff. They're gonna just sell licenses to operate tournaments to other companies. Which, which by the way, this is what like every single other video game publisher does yes uh and has, usually, has done for like 15 years yeah, but usually they allow more than one company to do it and instead this company called panda global has somehow convinced nintendo that they're the only company that should do it and anybody that wants to do these things needs to uh get on board with them and so Andrew, are you saying nintendo did something backwards and dumb yeah. in relation to the internet so midway through its thing the smash world tour up and canceled the rest of their dates and their tournament season for next year. And everyone oh, was dang. like, just like uh, in the middle of their thing, they just quit and closed. The Smash World Tour, the biggest one, I guess, of these said like, oh, we're done. We're ceasing operations and we won't do anything next year because Nintendo told us uh, we're not allowed to operate without this license. They won't give us the license. They said we need to deal with Panda and Panda said that we're not allowed to operate because we wouldn't work with them on these five or ten things we're just gonna shut down we don't care uh to which the panda exec uh in charge responded that everything was a lie and false and that they don't know how to run tournaments etc cetera, etc cetera. uh then the panda pr team got on and said um he was having a bad day. He said some things that Nintendo and we do not agree with, and he doesn't stand by those things. And uh, we'll be working with Smash World Tour to reinstate their stuff. Smash World Tour got back on and said no one's contacted us and hasn't reached out at all. This is a lie. Dang, did you just like try to go full f fake news there? Nintendo, and then PR team buried him. <laughs> Nintendo uh, has thrown up their hands about the whole thing and said, we're not involved. Oh, cool. Is this like someone has an, an actual uncle working at Nintendo? I don't here? Understand Is that what's happening? It, it's like this. It's, I don't understand how they could be i mean the most storied remaining hardware video game company on the planet and still just not understand modern technology and events like why why limit the license to only one person just sell more licenses you just get more money oh and it's, and it's not even like, it's like they limited it to like a mlg style group right where it's like a big company or whatever i know mlg is defunct but like i was trying to come up with something off the top of my head um like a major other publisher or somebody like an event something right it's not like you're saying just, oh only it Evo sounds like they just rented it off to some like, random guy that got there first you know like the literal guy who has an uncle who works at nintendo that's what i'm saying yeah yeah so bizarre yep True they have i mean they have the panda cup and that is pretty dang famous uh because it's the only one, right? You know? I mean, like, you know, you can understand from a business perspective being like, we want to run the only tournament for this. But if everyone was already in this other tournament and you, you're like, well, we're the only one who can be official. All of us, all of you who are those tournaments I just canceled, come sign up with us. Yeah. I kind of feel like that's not going to work out well for you, probably. Nah, yeah, not this real. nuts. The 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 story, the back and forth on it, uh, has been nuts. I was trying to see if uh, if it's still going, but um, yeah, I, the last news I found on it was from like a week ago. So if you're interested in that, I think every Nintendo covering news site has a story about how it all fell apart and who said what. Tragic, just like uh. This sounds like a lot of like he said, she said, like that Doom composer versus Bethesda thing, like Bethesda. Sorry. Thank you. Um, yeah, that sucks, dude. I'm. Why people be like that, man? Live and let live, guys. Obviously, you have an IP and you have to protect it or whatever. <laughs> but I think the people were already saying, like, we're willing to work with Nintendo. Nintendo was like, no, that's crazy. Crazy. I don't know. All right. 
uh, I know we've been playing some video games ourselves here. Uh, should we check in on Champions of the Continent? How's everyone doing? I, uh, oh, I'm uh, following Rosso into the building. A word? Okay, so you're yeah. in, uh, in Suffratalja? And I'm in Suffratalja, which is the newest zone for people that are not playing. This game is such an MMO. I understand that it's not an MMO, you guys, but like the whole like new content means a new zone. You know what I mean? And like in the yeah. new zone, it has all the materials you need for mining. And you know, it's just so designed that way. And it's it's uh, it's good that in that way. I'm not saying it's but it's funny. Um, I'm doing my update first because it's fast. I, I have been systematically getting rid of i think we talked about last time all the traveler stories i have finished upgrading all the stamp stuff so now i can go to actual weapons that i need i'm doing a michael and doing manual hunts as much as i can to try and work on those uh things jj i'm now over almost over eight thousand gems so it's a lot of gems dude uh you can make up some money real quick if you if you wanted I'm to Okay, I mean, I'm at, I'm at like 6K. I feel all right. I'm just saying. Uh, you if si if Cyrus I'm... drops tomorrow, I'm I'm situated. You, you set. Yeah. Uh, so, you know, now I'm kind of in like, okay, I should finish this story thing up and then start actually like prepping to play real content. <laughs> Although I beat I think, the, like, uh, the Shadow Dragon. Yeah, I haven't done that yet. Yeah. I think yeah. you're... Uh, I, I think... You know, once you run that that Sephirtalja dungeon, mm -hmm. uh, you know, I think you can uh, pay attention to where those elites are. Maybe plan to farm those guys, and then that's ninety percent of the materials gathering you need to do. <laughs> I yeah. wonder if those elites are going to go straight to the bonfires, and I could just do it there. Uh, I can tell you that yes, they will eventually, based on the uh, latest bonfires that just got added, the second level. Uh huh. Yeah, but they, the they don't level. automatically get added like the previous ones did. You still have to fight them on the where they're located on the map. Yeah, I know. But then they go to the so in the past, once you beat them, they went to the bonfire. Yeah. In bonfire one. So do they not do that in bonfire two? You have to wait for them to add them to the bonfire. So, yes, they don't. They haven't added. Uh, Sorry. No. If the elite has been released on the map, it gets added to the bonfire, but there are more slots in the new bonfires that they added than there are elites on the map. So you won't be able to fight the boss of, of some of the new bonfires yet because they haven't released all of the elites that are tied to it. But I won't need the boss. I just need a quick way to not dungeon crawl to get to these elites, right? But don't you want a dungeon crawl so you can fight both? I guess that's a good point. I mean, it'll also it'll speed things up, but just doing the just doing the tower is also, you know, slow on its own. The other thing, though, uh, you do want to farm that dungeon a bit because it contains the mats for like the armor and yeah. the, uh, the initial weapons, which don't need the materials the elites drop. That's a good point. Yeah, I think this is I've kind of skipped all the previous weapon drops of like sacred and all the other things you can upgrade because I knew I was behind and I was like, I'll be able to beat the content with normal upgrades as I go. Yeah. And if you have BT weapons, you'll be fine on the I content do have side. BTs. Yeah. I, I, Oh, that's the other big thing is that that was part of my, uh, not catching up on the content yet was I, I made and beat all the BTs. Get to farming. Nice. Yep. <laughs> Do I really need nice. to keep farming BTs? I don't know. I mean, yeah, only because you only need them to upgrade. The, make. Yeah. Yeah. The last level of all the weapons, like the sacred and the twilight here, all yeah. require a BT as a mat. And so that if enough... you want to make further ones in the future, they also need BTs. I have enough of that new uh, exchange stuff to make 10 BT weapons already. Yeah. There are still, I think, four four weapon sets that will use BTs as upgrade fodder after this. Yeah. I think it's nine total three sets of three. Wow. Uh, 
So yeah, my quick update on this is uh, I now have too many five stars to fit in one party. Hey, how'd you Hasht- pull more five hashtag, stars? Hashtag humble brag. Yeah, nice job. Uh, I still don't even have a full five, five, full eight of five. Yeah, the problem is now that like, uh, some of my five stars like Viola or <laughs> Viola and Fior are so high level that like, why they're like ninety eight. Like, what am I going to do with this? I can't bring you to anything. You're never going to get enough experience to matter. Like, this doesn't... So like, berries. Yeah, well, when I get some berries, <laughs> that'll be <laughs> what I'll do. That's what, that's what you'll use them for. But you need... But when I have to clear content or whatever, or, like, I'm trying to you do cup stuff... You gotta throw those guys in there. You gotta yeah. throw them in, and you're just like, well, this is, like... I guess you don't get XP from the cup stuff, so kind of who cares? But when you're doing the content, you're like, I cannot bring you. <laughs> it's like, okay, now my team is noticeably weaker. <laughs> mm-hmm. You don't have the like level ninety plus characters carrying you. You can tell the difference. Yeah, for sure. Yeah, I wonder what about you, Michael. I think JJ, oh, you and I, maybe we should try and take on the cups, the finals. I have I have fought at least all of the finals once for uh-huh. everything except Glossom, just because I know I don't have the right weaknesses for Glossom. Um, I think I have the right weaknesses to do Varken, and probably Ritu, but I haven't bothered to spend the time to figure out like the team comp and also i know like at least one of my characters is way way under leveled nice. yeah i tried i tried retu just as a, as an initial shot but i know that i didn't have my team equipped right for it i just wanted to see how it went so i should be able to go in and tweak a bunch of things and and make my team survivability a lot better yeah i think if i spent some time farming up the right kind of armor for that i could beat that fight uh, and Varkin, I think I have the right weaknesses for. It's just a question of like leveling up this one five star character kind of a lot from where they are. <laughs> right. And then also getting them weapons and gear and all that. So, what have you been up to in there, Michael? Well, uh, a couple of different things. Um, I, at this point, speaking of the cups, I have a pretty consistent uh, Tiki Lin team down. So, I've been working my way towards farming that enough to get her unique accessory. How long does that take uh, you each fight? Uh, each fight takes me maybe 20 minutes. Oof. Maybe. Ouch. Um, I, it's my, you know, mine is not a super optimized strategy, but it's consistent. Um, I it's know. It probably gets you know, shorter as you're going, too, a little bit, right? Uh, yeah. Yeah, you, you get to learn the fight better through repetition, and so you kind of know, okay, I should do this on this turn. You learn where... The, the particular thing about the cups, I guess, is learning where each of the bosses transitions into different phases of the fight so that you can you can set yourself up better several turns ahead. So basically, I know I need to do this much damage before she transitions into her crit only phase. So let me set up with my crit boosting moves ahead. Yeah, that's the kind of stuff you learn through practice, I guess. Uh, but the big thing, uh, and it, it actually touches on several of the things that you guys have already mentioned in terms of having more five stars and having a bunch of boost berries. Um, so we have talked um, several times, I think, when we first started playing about uh, being free to play in the game. Oh, no, Michael. Well, no. So I, I compromised. <laughs> I compromised slightly here. So I, uh, I'm sure I've mentioned this before, but I do Google rewards surveys. Um, and they basically just, uh, they ask you questions about your travel history and transaction shopping history um, by letting Google Maps follow you around kind of thing. And I had a ton of unused credit just sitting piling up. And the rewards credit is tied into the the general google play store credit so i thought you know what let me try the uh one of the the smallest paid ruby bundle it's five bucks anytime i get to so i had i think at the time i started i had like just over 50 dollars in credits so i set a line for myself and i said okay if i get to 55 dollars in credit i'll spend five bucks so I've done that enough times now to have the rubies to do the daily paid pull. 
Oh. Which, if you do it 30 times, so basically if you do it every day, once a month, you get a free five-star pull. So you get a five-star every month, basically, if you pay... Yeah. How much money in credit have you used to do a daily uh, It winds up being like 30 bucks to a dollar a day. Whew. Yeah. Um, but in you're also pulling from the general pool in each of those daily pulls. So in the times that I have done it so far, I have gotten, aside from a bunch of dupe three and four stars, I got uh, an awakening for my viola. I got a five star Therese. Um, I got a four and a half star Loomis. And my free five star pull was Hasumi. So you are also nice. over a full party now. Uh, I was already, but yes, I am, oh, fur- I am further over it at this point. I feel so, so unlucky been, compared uh, to you guys. <laughs> I mean, I think you could get, you could buy yourself 2000 rubies worth of luck if you wanted you know <laughs> yeah i know yeah uh, i'm holding out yeah you know put, i mean put spend put the guy spend the free spend the free money they gave you uh, and get some units you know but like put the also, guy in the game yeah, yeah put the guy in the game come on you want the money you want the money people making the game come on put the guy in the game that's cool michael though so are you're you, like you're are you ha- you okay you did it for a month did you stop have you put that as a cap and said okay now i've done it for one month and i'm done or is it going to be a thing for you from now on so i'll try i'll go through a second cycle just because i'm curious if the rate at which i pulled five stars the first time around continues Mm. because that'll that'll inform whether or not it's it's worth it to continue although the boost berries are also a really nice perk of it. So that lowest level pack is 50 paid rubies and five boost berries for five bucks. I guess if you were going to plan to do it longer term, I don't know if they offer higher end packs where you get more stuff. Well, so that's the thing is that the, and this, this is a whole other conversation. Their, their monetization scheme in this game is upside down. The higher you go in terms of what you pay, the less you get comparatively. So that's the best value really is to thing. buy the five dollar one ten exactly. times as yes. opposed to the hot top end one. That's right. Weird. It is very weird. And that you know, they they try and force people's hand by limiting the number you can buy each week at any particular level. I guess that makes sense too, though, because they don't want you to just literally like power all your characters to 100 and then just be bored and quit the game, which someone yeah. would do. Yep. Interesting. We have a pay to win huh. player among us now, Andrew. I, uh, I can't play anymore. <laughs> I'll always know that he can do it easily. He's not giving me real advice. He's giving me paid advice. Yeah, we've still got to we, strategize to beat the content. We have to hold strong to our yeah. uh, ability to not pay any money, Andrew. Yeah, but I have to use four stars to beat the content, Michael. I mean, I don't have a of... five star axe or a five star dagger. Ooh, no viola hurts really bad there. No, no uh, apothecary with regen hurts because that's have, one of the. Well, I did pull Agnes, of... who has he is on he is on yes. That's a big. That's true. That yeah. was a big pull. I will yeah. say that, uh, yeah, I, I, Andrew, uh, we were talking about, uh, we were talking in our chat today about uh, electrical damage, and I was like, you know, who do I have that has electrical damage? I can't even think. It. Oh, Teo, my axe Teo. guy. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Uh-huh. Nope. He, he no Teo over here. I literally and, have Mabel. Gilderoy, yeah. I have Mabel, and I have Elvis. Yeah, it's but like, rough. If I want single target electricity, it's only Teo and then Mabel. <laughs> I have no one else and Elvis, I guess. Yeah, you have Elvis. I mean, but you probably haven't worked very hard on five starring Elvis. No, I'm nowhere close. Yeah, he gets some fun new tools at five star. Well, he doesn't have a uh, multi target until five star, which is a yep. big problem. 
Yeah. So he picks that up. I don't have any good multi target lightning, period. Right now. Mabel has some, but it's it's minimal. I will also say that my bow situation is only four stars and Ashland is great, but like, you know, can't. Scarecrow is way better. <laughs> can't yeah. quite do it, you know. Sca- Scarecrow and, is the most unfair character I've seen in the whole game. I mean, Lucetta is also great, but like between the dude, two of them, they can kind of do it. But like, you have to bring both to accomplish <laughs> what the one guy does. I don't get what they were thinking with uh, with Scarecrow because even in Sephirtalja, where he's basically nothing is weak to bow, and uh, you can just set him on full boost for uh. Uh, what is that attack called? The four attack, Michael? Shower of arrows. Yeah, shower of arrows. You just full boost shower of arrows, and he's like, I'm still just going to kill everything, even with it unbroken. <laughs> it's like, what? Uh, I wouldn't say nothing is weak to bow, because I definitely know one of the elites is. Because I, I always I just, forget to bring a, a bow for that one, and everybody uh, always <laughs> takes forever. <laughs> just run away and swap out your lineup. Yeah, but I'm already in the fight. Might as well just grind it out. I did run into, uses. I ran into the candelabra fire-headed robot dude already in the dungeon. Yeah, get him. Uh, that was an easy fight for me. I don't know about the other one yet. Yeah, you'll you'll find more. There's, I think, two or three of them in there. There's cool. four total elites. Oh wow, that's a bigger dungeon than the last couple. I think they've all been four. The last, oh, have they? To the last two at least. Okay. Maybe I'm just misremembering. Yeah. Yeah. Good game still. Yep. Michael's selling it with paid rubies. Hey, it's not my money. <laughs> that's, tr- that's true. Make Google pay. <laughs> and that's that's the only reason that I was willing to try it. Yeah. I can't fault the logic of making Google pay for it. That part is reasonable. Yeah, exactly. I mean they're gonna they're just gonna throw money at me every time I go to Ralph's. I feel like it. If it has to be Google Play dollars, you might as well use it on something. Vampire Survivors DLC for your phone. <laughs> oh, I mean, I downloaded the free version, so whenever that hit, whenever that hits, yeah. I don't know if they're even doing that. I assume they will eventually do it. Why not? Right? It would make sense. It would make a lot of sense. Yeah, expand that market. Uh, well, if you want to expand our market, where can they do that, Michael? Uh, they can email us at podcast at wewergamers.com. Uh, hopefully we'll get enough mail to do another mailbag episode soon. Yeah. I I've been playing like Persona. We're still doing that. I like that game a lot. That's all you got to know for me. Yeah. And Andy, where are we on social media? Uh, we don't have a Mastodon yet. Nope. Uh, Instagram, Facebook. Yeah, yeah. All the good, all the social media. The real thing is YouTube. YouTube it. Yeah, find us on the on the tube. Especially last week's episode. Oh yeah, (laughs) that's a pretty big one for watching on YouTube. (laughs) Michael, it didn't look great, but it didn't look terrible, right? No, I mean, no, I'm you didn't see it live. No, I'm halfway through it, and it looks fine. It's okay. You can follow. You can follow what's going on. Exactly. Yeah. You, I, you know, it was a learning experience about how the the deck works, and and that included like trying to capture footage to send streaming and to record. You know. So, it was an interesting experiment. More when we try EMU deck at some point. Yeah. In the meantime, uh. Play those Pokemons and or other Game Boy games on your Steam Deck and tell us how they work. Uh, uh, yeah, I think I'm going to do Hollow Knight, maybe. You should play Hollow Knight. That's a great game. Good uh, I also set up Retro Arch last week, and I started a game of Sukaden 2. So. Because <laughs> you don't have enough going on with Persona and... Back, back on my bullshit. <laughs> COTC and Vampire Survivors and... Yeah, oh, man. I did unlock uh, more relics and vampire survivors this week too. I mean, there's a lot of stuff I haven't done because I haven't played since we beat the original uh, achievements in the game. Andrew, like there's, a, there's a relic you can unlock that lets you level up stuff past the end of the, its level up. Nice. You just keep leveling stuff up forever. <laughs> nice. Oh, very good. All right. 